Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Food for Thought for Easter Monday, April 5th, 2021. Glad you could join me. And uh, my name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. For all of you who have had Easter weekend services, boy, wasn't it nice to have a Resurrection Sunday uh, this Easter uh, Sunday? It was just wonderful. I, I can't even begin to express how great it was to be able to celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus this week. Well, that being said, last week on Wednesday, we started into a parable uh, on our devotions, the parable of the lost son, or the part, pardon me, the parable of the prodigal son who was lost, but he came home. He came to his senses and he came home. Now, this particular parable is divided into two parts. There is one lesson that talks about the son who went and squandered his inheritance and came to his senses and came home. The father saw him a long ways off, welcomed him home, ran up to him and, and hugged him and brought him into the house and threw a, a feast, put a robe on him and, and a ring on his finger and, and threw a great feast, killed the fat, fattened calf. Uh, just a celebration that he was lost and now he's come home and was found. Well, the second half of this parable talks about the older brother who had stayed at home while his younger brother had gone off into a faraway land. And uh, I guess you could say the older brother wasn't impressed with how uh, things went down at his house when he, uh, when he uh, saw how his father treated his younger brother who had been off doing his own thing. Well, that's where we pick up today. And our scripture that we're going to be focusing in on is found in Luke chapter 15 and reading from verses 25 to 32. So meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him, What's going on? Your brother has come home, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never even gave me a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother, is a brother of yours was dead and is alive. And he was lost, but now he is found. So when you think about this parable, there's a really important lesson in the second half of it. Um, and when you think about this, I, I was reading an article in Insight for a Living and I, I just thought, wow, this is so good. Um, you know, when I look at this parable and when we consider what it's trying to teach us, I think it's fair to say that there's actually two pig pens that are part of this story. And, and the most obvious one is the one in a far off country where the prodigal son who left and squanders inheritance on wild living found himself wallowing in. He was feeding the hogs that surrounded him, longing to fill himself with the pods that they were eating. And Yet the, the master that he found himself working for considered the pigs more valuable than him and wouldn't even allow him to eat the pods that he was feeding his pigs. So, you know, that was the one son and that was the one pig pen. But the son who was at home, he had a different kind of a pig pen, I guess you could say. Uh, the son at home, his attitudes were sinful. He thought he was righteous because of his ex external obedience to the father, but in reality, his heart was wallowing in a pig pen of resentment and self-righteous attitudes. And I think Jesus, when he was telling this story, you know, he was, he was thinking about the Pharisees who were outwardly, you know, obedient to the law of Moses and they were very careful to obey all the laws, but inside their hearts, they, they were not close to God. Um, this story, uh, 
can, can actually imply, I think, that all of us, we, we can actually find ourselves in a faraway country in our hearts, even without realizing it. And, and the prodigal son left to go to a place where he could live without any restrictions, where he could do what he wanted to do. But his older brother, even though he stayed home physically, um, he was still in a faraway country because his heart was filled with this self-righteousness and antagonistic attitudes. He was separated both from his father and from the other members of his family emotionally. His heart was, was filled with unforgiveness, jealousy, and, and bitter resentment towards his father and his brother. And the lesson that we can take home with us here is that we can be home, but yet really not be home. We can go to church and, and follow all the external rules, but yet our hearts can be far away from God and far away from the attitude that He desires us to have for our brothers and sisters. You see, the kind of righteousness, the kind of... Um, Goodness that God is after is a different kind of goodness than that which was produced by the Pharisees. Outward looking and godly, but yet inwardly bitter, miserable resentment and poisonous. That, that's what the Pharisees displayed. And yet we see the father and how he reacts to both sons, right? Um, the, the, the path of freedom from the pig pens of life is really paved with repentance and surrender to the will of the Father. Both boys in the story had strayed in different ways, but similarly, both of them needed to come to the point where they saw their need to repent and needed to ask their Father to forgive them. And the condition of the heart of a child of God is revealed more by attitudes displayed towards other people and God than it is by outwardly religious behavior, I guess you would say. The hearts of those Pharisees and scribes in Jesus' day resented Jesus for welcoming sinners and, and accepting them when they desired his forgiveness. But in reality... The Pharisees were actually in worse condition because they couldn't see their sinful hearts. They didn't see their need to ask for forgiveness because they appeared to be compliant on the outward things. And, and the case remains for both brothers. You know, the one who left home and found, found himself destitute and the one who stayed ha home and found himself dry, resentful, and, and angry. Both of those brothers needed to ask for forgiveness from their father. And they needed to adopt the attitudes of their father. The younger boy needed to buckle down and work in his father's fields with a good attitude and thankful heart. And the older one, although he was, was faithful and he stayed there, he needed to have the attitude of his father. And, uh, you know, you, you can just see it. All these years I've been slaving for you, Father. And what have you given me? You haven't even given me and my friends a young goat so we could celebrate. Yet you give this son of yours. You see, it doesn't call him his brother. This son of yours, you, you kill the fattened calf and you throw a celebration for him when he squandered his inheritance on prostitutes and wild living. Well, what does the father say? My son, don't have this attitude. That's what it, that essentially the father is saying here. Don't have this attitude towards your brother. It's right for me to, to throw a feast for him, to welcome him home. He was lost, but now he is found. Yes, I appreciate the fact that you stayed home, that you've worked in my fields, and, and you still have my inheritance here, and you haven't got the same consequences of, of living as your brother who was squandering things wildly, but don't you see that compassion that I have for your brother? That's the love that I have for you too. And I want you to have the same compassion and love towards your brother who was lost and now is found as I have. I want you to have the same heart as I do. 
And that's what the Father desires for all of us. He doesn't want us to be self-righteous because none of us really deserve the treatment that we get from our loving Father. But our loving Father wants us to have the same attitude as Him. He wants us to stay home. He doesn't want us to stray into far-off lands. But when we're home, He wants us to be engaged with Him relationally and also engaged with our brothers and sisters relationally. And that's going to take effort. You see, sometimes people feel bitter and angry and resentful and distant because they themselves have a problem that they need to let go of. And they need to be the ones that come forward and say, uh, how can I help my brothers and my sisters? How can I help you, Father? How can I have your heart, Lord? This is what Jesus wants for us on this Easter Monday. I pray that you would be blessed today as you go about your business. This is Food for Thought.